Hello everyone, today we'll go over how to copy, migrate, or backup files to ShareFile or from ShareFile using GSH Copy360 Enterprise. Before we go and we create the job, what we should do is we need to create an application-specific password from the ShareFile portal. To do so, you would log into your ShareFile account and then click on Settings, Personal Settings, and then click on Personal Security, Two-Factor Authentication, and then click on Generate Password for Application Passwords, Specific Passwords. Because if you try to use your own user account and password, and you've got multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication enabled, GSS Copy360 will not be able to log in because you can't authenticate. But by using application-specific password, which is what its role is, then you will be able to bypass this application, then a multi-factor authentication issue. So you click on Generate Password, give that a label, GS Rich Copy in this case, click Generate. Now this is the password that's created, so we're going to go ahead and say Copy to Clipboard. This is the only time you can see this password, so if you need to document it somewhere, that's fine. However, it's strongly advised you don't use the same password for multiple applications in case that's your situation. But let's go ahead and proceed forward. So we're going to, we copy this to the clipboard, we close it. Now we go to GSH Copy360 and paste it. We have the application installed and open. So we're going to create a, a job. So right click and say create a new job. I'm going to skip the wizard. I'm going to give this job a label. So copy to share file demo. The source, which is where we're going to copy from. In this case, we're going to copy from a local disk. If you wanted to copy from a different, from another share file location or from another cloud provider, you can choose to do so from here. Now we're going to go ahead and click Browse, or we can paste the location. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and select C Drive, Data Folder. This is just a small folder, maybe 5 gigs. I'm going to say Copy as Root Folder. If you select Copy as Root Folder, it's going to copy the folder data. If you don't, and then the subcontent of it. If you don't check that box, then it's just going to copy the content of that folder. So in this case, we're just going to do that. And then destination, which is where you want to copy to, you click on the drop down, select Citrix share file. Before we click browse, we want to add the account because we don't have an account here. So we're going to click on the add sign or the plus sign. Give the account an alias or just a label. So share file. Username, so you're going to use the same username that you created that password from. So, in this case, for the demo, we called it info at onlinerad.com. Password, I'm going to paste that from my clipboard. Now, let's go ahead and get the, the login URL. The login URL is going to be here. This is just a demo account that we're creating. You just copy that. You're basically your subdomain sharefile.com. So we paste that here and we click test. Now it's a successful disk. Basically, I used the credentials against the URL and it was successful. Click save. Now we can go in here and click browse. It's using those credentials that we just specified. And we're just going to go ahead and copy it here. We don't have any obviously on there so this is just a demo location so we select, check the box where we want to copy to click OK set your different options that you want we're going to be using four threads if you want to run this automatically at certain times so you can say start at this time repeat it and you set your schedule to run daily nightly hourly however way you wish <clears throat> if you check the box that says run this job as a service and it's set to a certain schedule, then what's going to happen is it's going to run at those intervals without the job, without you having to be logged in or an application open. So we're going to go ahead and click Save. Now we have copy to share file demo to start that job. You can right click and say Start. It says queued. 
So that means the job is queued right now. Momentarily, it's going to start. If you click on where it says queued, we can look at the progress screen when the job starts. Job started. Notice there are 15 files in there. It's processing at 16 megabytes per second. If you want to calculate this in megabits, it would be eight times whatever it is. Now it jumped up to 46. This is obviously fluctuating. It's copying across the internet. So far, it's been uh, running for 25 seconds. It copied four files, and it's got a few left to go. It estimated about 27 seconds left to go. These are all the different threads that are running. Remember, we copied, we set it to four threads, which is the default. However, you can set it to as many as you need, but you've got to be aware of how many uh, any bottlenecks, like your storage, could it handle multiple threads? Does your network bandwidth can support uh, that many threads, and so forth. Now the job completed successfully. It took about 59 seconds, and it copied 2.5, 2.6 gigs. When the job shows as green, that means it's fully successful. It did not encounter any errors whatsoever. If it does turn red, then it will show you, and that means that at least we had a problem copying a single file or a permission, or whatever the case may be. You can click on the log, and under errors, we will. if we had any errors, it would aggregate all the errors here, and you can just see in which files we had problems with, and you can troubleshoot it at that point or rerun the job. And if you wanted to copy from share file, it's pretty straightforward. Double click on the job, select source type, share file. Remember those credentials we saved here? We could reuse those credentials again. Now we select it, click Browse. This is the data folder that we just copied. You can see it, and you can just check the box and select Copy, and you said where you want to copy it to. Thank you very much for watching, and email us at support at in case you have any questions. Thank you once again.